Now, when you're new to creating content, batch recording seems the way to go because you can record a ton of videos in one sitting and not have to maybe set up and record content again for another four or five or even six weeks time frame. It's super efficient, but if you're not going into that batch recording session with the right mindset and without putting some precursors ahead of that, it is going to be a very frustrating thing because you'll pop your SD card in the computer and look at it and say, what the hell was that? I can't use any of it. Trust me, it's happened. Let me save you. Let's dive into these 15 tips rapid fire. First things first, make sure you're hydrating at least three days before your record date. Reason why you want to do this is because you actually want to hydrate your body, not just keep drinking water. For example, today's a batch recording day where I'm recording a lot of different videos, but the more that I talk, the more that I'm actually like sweating, using energy, a bunch of other stuff. So I didn't quite hydrate as much as I should have a couple days ago, but when you do actually hydrate a few days before, you won't be as thirsty. Your throat won't get as dry and crackly as you're talking more and more on camera. Tip number two, set a no miss record date, meaning when you put a date on the calendar for you to record, actually make sure that you're sitting down and you're going to record at a set time. Because if you don't, you'll keep finding reasons, keep finding other busy work for you to do that will make the day waste away. And that time you set aside to record will never happen. So don't try to plan, schedule, thumbnail stuff. If it's a recording session, it needs to be a recording session. The third tip is start planning actually like a month or so before that dedicated record date. The reason why is that you want to have a scope of what you need to do before, what research is required, what thumbnail concepts make sense for that video, and actually start working on that stuff before you record. Otherwise, those thoughts will distract you if you're just waiting until the day of to figure this stuff out. And tip number four is don't put everything on one SD card. Now, this is with an asterisk next to it. If you're only doing like four or five videos, go ahead and record all that stuff on that singular SD card because you don't need to keep swapping SD cards. But if you're going for the gold and you're going into eight, nine, maybe 10 videos, you do not want to literally put all your eggs in one basket. You want to separate those out or at least separate the A roll from the B roll. Reason why is because after you're recording so many videos, it's not that the SD card is going to just go berserk on you, but you also don't want to run into the issue where if it's an older card that you know you should have replaced it by now, it gets corrupt, it gets cracked. I have had cards that are 256 gigabyte cards full of stuff and the little lock on the side breaks. You might be able to get it off if it's in the right position, but it's just almost, it feels impossible at that point to do anything with that card to get your stuff because it's broke. It's not worth learning the hard way. So my tip number five is use reliable SD cards. Reason why I'm saying use reliable SD cards is you may get an error in your camera, your SD card may be flaky. Let's just be honest. What is the point of being that cheap with an SD card, one that's five or nine dollars, instead of just getting the one that's 20 bucks? We've all wasted 10 or 15 dollars on candy or sodas or snacks or something silly. This is your content and you want that content to do its job. Stop burning and wasting your time. And it's like for 20 dollars that'll last you like a year, a solid year on a good SD card is always worth it. It's just like that's one area just don't cheap out on. Number six, pre-test all of your recording stuff before you sit down to record. This is one of those things where, especially if you're using those long uh, lapel cables and stuff and you're running that on the floor, this will pick up all kind of noise, audio interference, and a ton of other crap. You do not want to get to the point that you're recording a ton of videos. You see the audio meters moving like it should, but at the same time, it has some the whole way through. It just we ain't about that life. Just check your stuff, make sure it looks right, make sure it sounds right, test it, take the SD card out, put it in the computer, watch your footage, and just make sure you're straight. The last thing you wanna do is batch record a bunch of stuff that's all messed up. Tip number seven is if you need to record natural B-roll, which is stuff that you're gonna record yourself instead of getting it from websites like Storyblocks and stuff, make sure you do that after you record your A-roll. So that way you're not going back and forth. You shot a few things, you're like, oh, I mentioned this in the video, or I had a better idea and I went with that, and then I forgot to put that in the video. So now you gotta stop and go re-record something else. Just record the B-roll after the A-roll, not that you can't start acquiring some B-roll stuff, but just do it afterwards. That way you make sure you nail all the stuff you need. 
So when it comes to B-roll, make sure you create a shot list, which means make a list of everything that you need to record. So if it's the SD card, maybe I wanna hold that up to the camera. If it's my SSD drive, I wanna make sure I hold that up to the camera. If I'm talking about it being USB-C versus USB micro, make sure I'm showing both of those. You wanna use what's called the say, show, and spell method. This will make sure that you kinda nail your B-roll just about every time. If I'm saying something like the Samsung SSD, then at the same time I'm saying it, I'm showing it on the screen. And if it's something that's kinda complex, then I'm gonna put that spelling on the screen just so people are aware, no matter if they're visual learners, if they need to read it to verify what you said, because some of us are a little country and our dialect is not always exactly clear. Tip number nine, organize your files so that when you put this stuff on your computer or your cloud drive, all of that stuff is easy to use and you're not just spinning your wheels. It gets frustrating. Tip number 10 is print out or write out the plan for the video. Now we did a whole masterclass. It's live on the channel where it teaches you how to plan, record and edit your videos. It's like an hour long training that is available if you want to click on the bubble and in the information card. And I'll also put a link to it in the description, but have this in the format that you can go through, read your notes. It's exactly what I'm doing for this video. Because you're batch recording, make sure you organize your video order that you're recording. You don't want to make a video that's indoors and then go make another video that's outdoors and then come back inside. Like put this stuff in a logical order. So if I'm saying, here's how to set up Sony ZV-E10. Now let's go through the microphone settings. Then let's go through what tripod I'm using, all that stuff. And those make sense to recording the office. Let's do all of those at once. Then all of the videos outside actually get made outside. It makes a more fluid process and a mental fluid process from recording and actually delivering the stuff because you're not having to mentally jump through a bunch of hoops. Tip number 13, create an editing template. When you're going to go in to create content, more than likely, you're gonna be using the same stuff. You're making just about the same adjustments to the audio, making about the same adjustments to the video as far as the brightness or any contrast or saturation that you may add, stuff like that. Maybe set a template of what you can do. We have this in the company where for with podcast audio or stuff that's on my uh, Rodecaster Pro, then that has a certain template that we can just drag and drop and it completely makes all the settings exactly the same. It sounds consistent every time you're listening to the podcast. When I'm using the Rode lapel system, which I'm doing right now, we have a preset for that. So we make those minor adjustments every time. So the audio is consistent, no matter when I'm recording content, I'm always using the same gear. So why shouldn't it sound and look the same? So make yourself some templates and presets. Tip number 14, protect your mindset before and after you record videos. After you have recorded and before you've recorded content, this is the fastest way to delete and for video ideas to die even after you've recorded them. Once you've done it, you will keep doing it over and over again. Meaning when it's time for you to get ready to sit down and record videos, you'll keep making excuses for, you need to do more research. You need to keep messing with the thumbnail first. You need to keep doing all this other stuff instead of just recording the video. Then if you're not protecting your mindset, you're going to record stuff. And then you look back at it. You say, this is not good. This is not good enough. I'm just going to delete the video and do it later. So now you've wasted your time and your audience is still suffering with whatever problems and pain points your videos was going to address. The reason why you want to protect your mindset is because as a creator, your job is to solve problems, no different than any entrepreneur, whether that's in entertainment, education, or whatever it is, your content serves a purpose. When you prejudge yourself too harshly, you begin to get to a point to where you just literally aren't posting videos. And that's how you run into consistency issues because you're not protecting your mindset as a creator. I think of all the tips that I'm giving you here, this one is the most valid because it doesn't matter what gear you buy, then what settings you copy, doesn't matter what LUTs you use. If you are not protecting yourself as a creator so that you can go into this video with confidence and exit the video with confidence so you can actually post it. There's so many videos that die after the recording phase because they, people just don't feel confident in what they've made. And your stuff may be the best you've ever made, but you feel like because it's not better than somebody else's channel way somewhere else in the world, you're not, yours is not worthy of posting. And that's the biggest lie that you can tell to yourself as a creator. When you're going through this creative process, protect your mindset. So don't read comments, don't read messages, don't check text messages, don't test emails, nothing. Before you get ready to go into your videos, you need to be pumped up, ready to go create because your people need you and they need you to post that video. And tip number 15, by all means of all things that are holy and great, test your freaking 
audio because every time I go to a video, thumbnail's great, title's on point, and it's maybe addressing or it's on something that I'm interested in, and that audio is punching up against the wall and it's hard to listen to, I'm sorry, I can't watch it. And I'm sure there's tons of other people that are like that. Test your audio, it'll save your life as a creator. If you wanna know what audio microphone setups I recommend and some of the tests that I did, I tested like six, seven different lapel microphones. In this video, I'm only using one. If you wanna see a comparison between the best budget microphones to consider, make sure you check out the video on the screen. I think you'll get a lot of value out of it because it might just save your bacon with your audio.